Hi, this is Gonzalo from the AWS Glue team, and today I will show you a game-changing feature just added to Glue Studio that empowers users to extend the tool capabilities. The purpose of custom visual transforms is to allow users to provide their own reusable visual components. Different businesses have their own particularities, and sometimes standard industry data handling techniques might not be enough to address their needs. For such cases, they can create a custom component built for purpose. Another potential use case for this feature is when there is some process made of multiple simple steps that a team has to build over and over. It will be easier to consolidate as a single component they can reuse as a unit. In the past, when a visual job needed something not available out of the box, you had to write custom code, either as a component or moving into a full script job. This requires coding skills and knowledge of the underlying frameworks and APIs. Instead, now you can have your coding experts building components for the rest of the team to reuse. To build your custom transform, implement the logic in Python using Glue and PySpark APIs and features. Deploying it to Glue Studio is simple. Just put the Python file in a specific S3 bucket together with a companion JSON file that defines the transform and the parameters it needs. Once the configuration is validated, the new custom transform will immediately be listed in Glue Studio and ready to use. Here is a high-level view of how this feature works. Once the transformer files are on S3, Glue Studio will load the definition so it can be used for a visual job and you can provide any transform-specific configuration that it might require. When you save the visual job, it generates the corresponding code as usual, but in this case with the calls to the custom transforms used. Later when the job runs, it will use the generated code together with the logic script provided for each custom transform. So now we're going to see how this will look in practice. So you will have to first develop the code and then the configuration or the other way around is up to you. In my case, I'm going to do first the code. So I created a Glue Studio notebook to test this. I just started with the default configuration. I just set up the version to match the one I'm going to use for production and two workers will do for my test. That's enough. So I went ahead and defined my transform. In this case, all it does is receives some state code and which is the column where the state is in stored in the data set. And it will keep just those rows with the code match. This is just a simple example to illustrate. Then I assign it to dynamic frame so it can be used later. Now I want to test this. So I created a fake data set, just three rows with a couple of columns. Just to demonstrate, you could read it from a file or some real data set, probably smaller ones so you can test quicker. And then I run a few tests here, testing the different values in the columns, using the default parameter, even a negative test to make sure that everything is right. So once I'm happy with my test, my code, and even my performance, if you wanted to test that as well here, so all you have to do is get this code and put it in a Python file next to the configuration so it can be used. So here I've already taken the code we developed from the cell before and saved into a Python file into S3 into the predefined bucket for the region and account. And then just put next to it a companion JSON file with the same name so it picks up the file automatically. And I will show you now how that looks. It's really simple. All it needs is to define a few options. It's all documented, but the important thing is that the function name matches the function we have assigned to dynamic frame in the code, and the same with the parameter names, and then we're ready to use it. So if everything is correct, the next time I open the visual editor, my transform will show next to the others, and I can search for it and use it like any other component in Glue Studio and configure it according to the configuration parameters I have defined. So now we see the transforming being used as part of a pipeline where I read a JSON file from S3 and they're stored in the catalog. This JSON only has the three rows that I showed before, and in this case I'm keeping the one from New York. I can use the data preview feature to see that my filter is working correctly, and now you can go ahead and create your own transformations. Thank you for listening.